Hello there, beautiful. How are you doing today? I will be honest, um, it has been a long day. We are in the middle of potty training our two-year-old and it is exhausting. I can't even tell you how many pairs of things we have gone through already today, but we are sticking to it as we need her to be potty trained <laughs> before she's three. But that's where I'm coming to you too. So I am very excited to be here with you today. She is napping finally and I get to take a break from changing her pants <laughs> over and over. I hope you are having a great day. I am Becky Bunnell, owner of Luca Haven Design, which is a purpose-driven interior design company in Grand Rapids in West Michigan. And we love Connection. And we are looking over the next two weeks at how we have a more welcoming home for us, our family, and our guests as they enter. And today we're going to start looking at your entryway, your mainly your front door entrance into your home, your first impression. So the way we start this, like any other exercise, is really start with that empathy exercise that brings people um, to light of how we want to feel in this space and what we're doing in, in the space. So we're really becoming present and mindful in the moment. So your first impression of your home as you're walking up, look at your landscaping, look at your front door, going through these exercises to really understand how your home feels. What is your first impression of your home? And then asking your guests too, how do you feel when you come into our house? What are the words that come to life for you? Are they the ones you want them to feel? So taking the time, the first thing is taking that time to really ask those questions. Doing that empathy exercise, being present and mindful in the moment to understand how your first impression is already set up in your home. And if you want to change it, or if you just want to tweak it slightly for yourself and others. And from there, you develop that intention statement or that intention summary. How do we want it to feel? What words do we want to feel? What activities do we want to take place in our front entryway? And that helps guide you as you're you know, making design changes. They can be small or large depending on um, how you feel about your entryway. So today we're going to go over some quick tips um, that I've learned and I've read on blogs and just kind of culminated them together to give you some of the top tips for your front door, your first impression of your home. Now I'll start first by just reiterating some of the ones we talked about last week with kid spaces is mudrooms. And you can check out those tips um, on last week's video, but the quick ones right, are to make sure that you have a place for everything in your mudroom so it's not crowded when you come in, that your kids can easily get to things or that you can even put things away easily. So I always recommend lockers or some type of locker system. Um, keeping it organized and then making sure you have those durable washable materials as that's the family entrance. A lot of dirt comes in there. But today we're going to focus on the front Are you know, what does your front door look like? Do you have a welcome mat that makes people feel like they want to come in, that it's not this uh, spider webbed front door that no one uses? How do you make it feel more welcoming? And we have um, a wreath that we uh, I can use throughout all seasons. It's um, actually the one from Candace Cameron Bure, um, like a geometric gold wreath and I can change the words on the middle. So right now we have love grows here. Um, I can change it when it's winter. I can change it when it's fall. There's a bunch of different sayings and I just put a little sprig um, of the season. So I have a little garland there that is very spring related that will change out during the different seasons. Super easy to use, very welcoming as people come into our door. And then once you get on the other side of that door, some of the big tips there 
are making sure that it doesn't feel too crowded. That you can have a place for about four people to be in that space and take off their shoes, take off their coats, put their stuff down on something. So a council table is always nice, a bench that people can sit and take their shoes off of away from the door. I'll be honest, kids will always sit in front of the door whether you have a bench or not. But making sure there's enough room so that parents can kind of shove them out of the way to get their shoes off and come in and be greeted at the front door easily. And that they know where all their stuff goes. So having coat hooks and a bench and a table to set their stuff down on, that they're able to set the food down on, that you're able to come to them and welcome them grabbing their stuff and offering a drink um, is one of the biggest tips for that front door. Um, with that though, making sure there's a rug in your space so people know where they can go. I have about, I think about a five foot seven, five by seven rug in there. Seems to be a really good size to allow people to come in freely. Um, you can do a runner if that's what you have space for. It helps people understand that they can come away from the door, right? The runner is longer. So they can come away from the door and still take off those shoes to make it feel more welcoming. Um, another thing is, um, you know, making sure you understand the tone. This is your place to set the tone of your home right away when people come in. So what is that tone? Maybe you're putting something very intriguing in the space. Um, an object in that space that really brings the tone that you want set for your home. You can even do this in your mudroom as well, whether you have a, a fun of, maybe it's a proverb from the Bible or, you know, the names on the doors. One of the ways that I um, have loved doing this is if you get the letter board or a chalkboard and you know someone's coming, why not just write, welcome Benelis, right? Right in the front. That way they feel welcomed right away. You are planning on them coming. You're taking notice of them and really help them feel like they belong in your home. Um, and then to welcome you home, some of the same things that we covered in the mudroom, right? Having those things like your name or a saying or a place to put things or the biggest thing that transcends memories or brings memories or feelings into the, the forefront is smell. So how does it smell in your front entryway? The way you can do that, you don't necessarily need a diffuser or a plug-in if you don't like those. Even putting essential oil drops on a cloth and hiding it within the decor. Or we use different cleaners depending on the season. So I have Dr. Bronner's, let's say a lavender hemp that I mix with some water and, you know, just wipe down surfaces. And then it's already bringing that smell into the surface as I clean is another way to do that. Making sure there's enough light in your entryway is another big thing. Um, because the space is so small, you can make a big impact with a good light fixture. So getting a little bit more of a chandelier if you can, or a multiple light um, flush mount is another good option. Making sure there's enough light. And if it still feels a little dark, think about hanging a mirror because that mirror will then reflect the light into the space from another location, really brightening up that space so that it feels like you're coming in from outside the outside world. You're coming into the space just feeling like you can take that breath because there's light and lightness to the space. Another thing I like to do is if you have a table at your entryway, think about putting a lamp there that's on a timer. Have this light shining through your front door, just this very dim light. And it's kind of like saying, we're leaving the light on for you. You are welcome here. No matter what time of day it is, we're here for you. And it really makes a home feel more welcoming. Even as you have kiddos maybe coming home late after work in the winter, especially um, from their job, it's dark out, or um, coming home from college in the middle of the night, 
that light at the front door as they're driving up to your home makes them feel like this is home. The light is on for me. I am welcome here. So that's another way to use light to make it feel more welcoming. But what are your tips for the front door? How do you make it feel like home? How do you make that good first impression for yourself and others? What words do you use to describe home? What is it for you? What makes you feel at home? Do that empathy exercise. The action step is to start asking those questions of your family, of your guests as they come in. If you have any guests coming over this week or this weekend, ask them, how does our home feel when you enter through our front door? Do you feel like you have enough space to kind of unwind, if you will, to take the shoes off, to hang the umbrella somewhere? Ask them and then understand who you want your family to be. What words do you want them to feel? And to make little tweaks to your front entry way to make it be a little bit more welcoming. Go into the store and grab a quick mat. We have another five by seven right outside our front door. So that way, it's not this small welcome mat, it's this larger area that's like kind of welcoming them in, kind of funneling them in from the five by seven to the welcome mat. Funneling them in, saying you are welcome here. So what can you do to your front door this weekend? What tip can you take away? What inspired you? I would love to see it in the comments below and your extra tips. Let's help each other out. How can we make our home's first impression even better? What are your tips? I would love to see them, read them in the comments below. And then if you have any further questions on front entries, please DM me uh, or email me. Um, I would love to hear from you. And then if you have found this inspiring or have loved these tips, please share this on your feed. We're trying to grow the community. As always, we would to potty training two-year-old. <laughs> Consider yourself lucky if you are out of this stage. But I wish you all the best, and I will see you tomorrow. We're going to talk through living rooms. What are those top tips for making a living room more welcome? 1 o'clock tomorrow, Wednesday. I hope you are all able to join and bring a friend. Talk to you soon. Bye.